Good evening. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the 10th annual Catch the Vision Real Estate Look Forward for 2021. Tonight, we're proud to present our program, not virtual, but live on Cape TV Channel 98, or you can watch us streaming on www.capecoral.net. We have a team of professionals that have put this program together for your information. We hope you sit back, relax, and enjoy it. This program will also air four other times during the month, so please set your DVR. It's my pleasure now to thank our sponsors for helping us produce this program tonight. ABC Pest Control, a handy home inspection company. Arthur Printing. Abishan Homes, Cape Cleaners, Chapman Insurance Group, The City of Cape Coral, Cool Air Pros, Diamond Daves, Fidelity National Title of Florida, Inc., Florida Mortgage Funding Group, Frank and Sons Moving, Senior Move Management, My Undercover Agent, Rasso Realty, Spiro and Associates, High Fidelity Studios, BJM Consulting, the Cape Coral Construction Industry, Billy Johnson, the Chamber of Commerce of Cape Coral. Hey, welcome to Catch the Vision COVID edition. Billy, tell us about the uh, unique conditions we're filming this year. You know, Joe, it is crazy. Normally right now, we would be sitting in this packed arena full of about 600 people getting ready to highlight the best of what we got to offer this year. But, you know, that pesky little virus has us in our lovely new secret hidden bunker studios here. You know, maybe the Chamber of Commerce. I don't know. But, you know, we're safe. We're apart. And we want to bring to you a fantastic offering of what this city has for you. So, uh, Joe, you want to get started? Let's go. Let's go right away to the Fairfield Inn where uh, we focused uh, the groundbreaking last year. Billy, you were there. What are we looking for this year? You know, it was an amazing project, Joe. Uh, we do have some, uh, we have some footage for you. You know, uh, due to the modern magic of High Fidelity Studios, we were able to clone ourselves. Can you believe that? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we were able to clone ourselves. So we're going to go to Billy on site, per se, at the Fairfield Inn Marriott. Take it away, Billy. We are at the Fairfield Inn by Marriott here where we were last year for the groundbreaking of this great project. Um, we're gonna give you a little bit of an update where we stand one year later. So if you could please give us a general overview of the project. Absolutely. Well, my name is Mai Perez. I'm the director of sales for the new Fairfield Inn, Cape Coral, North Fort Myers. We're excited to be opening. Projected date at this moment, March 17th of this year. Uh, you know how construction is, give or take. Um, the hotel has uh, 109 rooms consisting of four floors. And uh, with it, we also have many different amenities that are uh, standard for Marriott, but at the same time, uh, on a, a newer version, let's say it that way. <laughs> All of our rooms are equipped with microwave, refrigerators, coffee makers, 55 inch plasma TVs, that have what's called a guest entertainment package, uh, which will enable the guests to do all their online streaming and cast it onto either from the phone or iPad, laptop, cast it onto the TV itself. That's great to hear. Uh, could you give us the total cost of the project? Absolutely. The project itself is at 13 million and we're looking to employ approximately 22 employees. Speaking of the great amenities, uh, do you have any special amenities that you all offer? We do. We offer complimentary breakfast to all of our in-house guests. In addition, we do have complimentary Wi-Fi in all the guest rooms throughout the property. We do have an on-site fitness center, swimming pool. We have a small meeting room, 490 square feet, which we are looking forward to um, you know, sharing with some of our local guests. Well, we appreciate you coming out today and give us an update of this fantastic project. And we really look forward to opening it because it is definitely going to be a benefit to our city. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Great segment, Billy. Thanks, Joe. You know, it's amazing what the modern magic of cloning can do. You know what? Why don't we move on for our lovely viewers at home and tell us what's next. Hey, next, I get cloned and I show up at the Cape West 91 Villas in Southwest Cape Coral. 
All right, we're at uh, the site of Cape West 91, a multifamily project here in Southwest Cape Coral, talking to Chris, who is the contractor. Chris, tell us a little about the project you're working on. You bet. Well, Joe, we just got started. Uh, we've kind of been on hold here for a few weeks, waiting to relocate some burrowing uh, uh, owls uh, and some gopher tortoises. And we finally just got those uh, relocated to another site and we've just gotten started. This is gonna be a, a really beautiful, clean, coastal, contemporary style, four-story, 91-unit apartment building, uh, courtyard style. Okay, tell, explain courtyard. What is that? What, what kind of amenities are associated with the project that make it uh, a courtyard type project? You bet. So it's gonna look like a, a, a square, you know, and all the apartments are gonna be flanking around the outside. In the middle is gonna be a really nice courtyard, resort style pool, shaded structure. There's on the first floor we're gonna have a wellness center, a, a kind of a built-in clubhouse with a fitness area. So it's gonna be really nice. It's a courtyard style development. Uh -huh. And and what have you done with and explain to us what you have done in the design of this uh, to uh, to fit in well with the surrounding single-family homes? Yeah, it's a great great question, Joe. So we know that we're right in the middle of a single-family home. We are coastal, we're down the street from the water. Uh, so we didn't want to make this look too contemporary. It can't stick out like a sore thumb, thumb excuse me. So uh, we've incorporated nice brackets around the, the outside of the building, uh, Bahama shades, Bahama shutters, uh, we really try to make it look like a residential style building, even though it is a four story building. So we think it's really gonna complement the area and I think it's really gonna be attractive and it's not gonna stick out. And you said 91 units? 91 units, yes okay, sir. Okay, uh, rental area, market rental value, what are, you, what are you talking about here? We're thinking the rents would be somewhere between $1,400 and $1,700 a month. It's a combination of one and two bedrooms. So we're thinking naturally it's gonna be a lot of young uh, professional families. Uh, so that's, that's really the target market. Okay, and uh, completion date, projected. Projected completion, completion date, uh, you know, barring no natural disasters uh, is the first quarter of next year. Okay, great. And so we are, uh, we're looking at uh, young professional families, one and two bedroom units, uh, fitting in well with the uh, neighboring community, um, starting off the first quarter of next year. Uh, value of the construction project, what is the total value of the project? It's right in between, it's, it's right around 15 and a half mil. Okay, very good. Well, good luck, welcome to Cape Coral, and thank you so much for uh, taking the time to talk to us. Thank you, sir, appreciate it. And we're back. You know, Joe, it's amazing what Reggie can do with that whole cloning process. You know, great project for Cape Coral. I know that we got a special project next that you've been working on for quite some time. Why don't you tell our viewers at home what that project is? Hey, Billy, we go to the western ends of Cape Coral along State Road 78 to the D&D &D Marine and boat, boat ramp. Okay, we're here with Mike Hill Chisholm from the City of Cape Coral Public Works Department, uh, project, special project uh, manager at uh, the D&D Marine site, which is a city park. Uh, let's start off, Mike, with talking about where we've come and all of the uh, upheaval we've gone through to get to where we are today with this site. Sure, so when the city first acquired this site, um, it was functioning with a, a privately owned bait and tackle shop and a boat ramp, and then just a strip of land that had access to the water. Uh, it quickly, for us, became uh, an amenity that we saw that the community wanted to continue to use in fact, as we uh, looked at the numbers uh, related to boat launches, this happened to be uh, the, the one piece of inventory that had the highest amount. Um, with that said, we were observing this property and what it was providing, and we, were, we had identified some safety issues. So early on, we wanted to look to improve this property from a safety perspective, and we um, applied for some grants to, to actually design relocating the boat ramp that exists on site. In that process, uh, we had uh, our neighborhood group that represents the Northwest neighborhood uh, come forward and basically propose some alternatives that would um, get rid of the boat ramp at this location because the current condition has the people that are launching their boats coming out perpendicular in the canal and they're actually uh, backing down because when you, when you bring a trailer in, you're backing it. So they're actually backing into 
uh, the main channel, the main flowway. So their concerns basically kind of mirrored ours. We knew that there was some safety issues both upland and uh, in water. And so their main objection at that point was to say, get rid of the boat ramp in its entirety, move it somewhere else in the canal system. A few years back, we had just, uh, we were able successfully to designate this waterway as a uh, manatee zone. And that allowed us to put in a slow speed uh, zone to protect those species. So that kind of ran in conflict. If we moved the boat ramp out of here and moved it further north into the system, then that provided with more impacts with the boaters as opposed to having the transient traffic basically at the base of this uh, waterway. So we really felt, staff felt that the best thing was to kind of keep it at the location it was, but pr provide or review existing layout of the land that would provide safer uh, boating. And so that's what we proposed the city council was basically taking what we had and making it safer and making it better. Some of the controversy associated with this was not only the moving of the boat ramp, but the the city took a shot at, since they own the property, of annexing it to the city of Cape Coral. Uh, they got pushback from the folks in Matt Lachey, and that has since been put aside. Uh, moving forward, knowing the conditions that we have right now, this is located in unincorporated Lee County. The city is going to build out a park here. Uh, what are the next steps that are going to happen with regard to this? Sure, so just a little bit of background on that. When we initially went to city council, for the safety improvements upland and in the water. At that um, public hearing, city council had asked us to, to tie into that um, a restaurant so that we could en entertain a P3. And at that point, then it became, well, this isn't just going to only be a park, what type of development could happen on the property? And so we faced a lot of opposition from our adjoining neighbors that were worried about whether or not it was high rises, whether or not it was gonna be a boat ramp with condominiums, a boat ramp with restaurant. And there was a lot of uncertainty at that point. So we stepped, we took a step back. And what we did was we said, okay, let's, let's go forward with the boat ramp itself first, and then come back at a later date and determine whether or not a restaurant is the best fit for here, or if it just remains a park by itself. Okay, you mentioned uh, you, did, you had originally uh received a couple of grants to work on this site. I, I understand those grants have, uh, some of them have expired. Are we redoing uh, applications for grants to continue the work on this site? Sure, we, we applied for and successfully received two grants. One was a West Coast Inland Navigation District grant, which is a separate taxing district. Uh, and that was basically to take the existing ramp that is at, located at the west end of the property and provide some safety improvements there. Uh, redoing the seawall, redoing the ramp itself, the launch dock associated uh, with the people that need to get on and off their vessels and providing a handicap space. When we ran into the delays with the annexation, it pushed us to the point where the, in putting in those improvements um, were going to take so long because we, we didn't want to put money in the property if it was going to be such that council wanted to divest themselves of this property. So we. We ended up writing a letter to West Coast Inland Navigation District and actually returned that grant to them and said, at this point, although we, we do believe the safety is an issue, we don't believe it's right spending those grant dollars. When and if we develop this as a boat ramp, we'll come back to you at a later date and ask for a similar request to provide that safety. But at that time, we will have known if we were going to be keeping this as a uh, city property in a city park with a boat ramp. That leads us into the second grant that we applied for. That was a Florida Boarding Improvement Program uh, state grant for the design on this property to actually provide the boat ramp and the parking and the safety upland. We were also successful based on the amount of boaters that were using this site, not only within the city of Cape Coral, but coming from um, uh, East Lee County and from uh, Pond Island itself. We were successful in securing that grant. So that grant we actually have and is underway and we are designing a, a facility on this property to relocate that boat ramp from the west back to the east, provide some parking and some stormwater that will fit no matter if the city council decides to move forward with the restaurant or retain it in, as a 100% park use. Okay, well that's good news that we still have, we still have uh, access to those grant funds for the improvement. This five acre site, going forward from this point, what kind of time frame are you looking at for the improvements? 
So where we are now is we, we are going to be presenting the city council. They had asked us to come back uh, with two options. One that provides for their original vision, which is a boat ramp with parking and a restaurant tour that could, we could partner with, uh, similar to other city parks. Um, and the second option would be to come back just having the boat ramp and the parking and then activating the waterfront for people to enjoy their waterfront, either fishing, uh, bird watching, or just sightseeing. So we've developed both of those options. And within those two options, we've, des we've designed them such that the boat ramp and parking uh, can be done as phase one and not impact city council's decision on whether or not to retain it as a park or a restaurant. So we think we really are going to be bringing back to them a design and concept that allows us to improve the safety and gives council the most flexibility. And what time frame for that coming back to council to make that decision? Um, we are going to city council in February. Oh, great, great. And uh, if city council were to confirm your plan moving forward, how fast would construction start? Um, we would have to complete our design. So we need to go through the 30, 60, 90 develop, typical development, uh, finalize those designs, permit them with the Army Corps of Engineers and the DEP and the Water Management District, and then we can start the construction. So you mentioned Army Corps, and that's always a lot of time. We're looking at 2022, 2023 construction? Um, it's likely going to take over a year. Yeah, that's what I thought. And what kind of what kind of dollars are, are are you contemplating spending on this five acres to make the final improvement without the restaurant? Um, the current designs and what was origi originally proposed were around four million dollars. Depending on the extent of the park that uh, the city council said they go that route, depending on how many amenities they want to add, shelters, whether or not they want to fully seawall it versus allow um, uh, some captain's walk. Uh, that could range anywhere from an additional uh, one to three million dollars. And then if doing the restaurant, providing the pad ready site with all the finger piers for that, which obviously then could be recouped uh, with a lease, a ground lease, um, that could exceed uh, over $10 million. If we were to do a P3, a public private partnership for a restaurant, and people see that, wow, you're gonna spend another three or four million dollars, what kind of revenue uh, has the city experienced from the similar P3 restaurant at the Yacht Club on an annual basis? Uh, I believe this past year, the city uh, had exceeded uh, $500,000 annually in revenue. And with that type of uh, return, if we were to go the route of the restaurant, you could see that the return on investment um, going from the 3 million to the 10 million, you know, it could take some time, but from thereafter, it would be a, a revenue generating proposition for the city. Very good. Mike, thank you so much for uh, clearing up some of the misinformation and misunderstandings. And we look forward uh, to staff bringing this project to city council in the near future. Thank you. Billy, the city's been working on the D&D &D, uh, marine property uh, and boat lift for years. It looks like they're finally ready to get started on that project. You know, last year we talked about another really exciting project on Pine Island Road. Can you give us an update as to where we are with that project this year? Yeah, it's a great project that we focused on last year's Catch the Vision. Uh, the developer that we met with had a really unique style of what how he was going to develop that property. But with the onset of COVID, you know, you have to things change. And uh, he has been real resilient on how he's now taken that same property and came up with a whole entirely new concept. Well, let's take a look at it. Yes, last year, if you remember, we had a gazebo, we had retail space, we had office space. Uh, with this COVID coming in, people want more economical space. And we decided to change the complete plan from that office retail to flex space, all flex space. So we got flex space ranging from 1,100 square feet up to 20,000 square feet. And it can be retail, it can be office, and it can be warehousing. All kinds of different uses at a much, at a rate, less than half the rate that we had the last time. Okay, so uh, total square footage of the project, what it was last year and what it is now? Last year was about 36,000 square feet. Now it's 40,000 square feet that could go to 60,000 if we want to. Okay, so the change in the project actually enabled you to go with more uh, larger footprint. Larger footprint at a much reduced cost for the consumer to rent. Whoa, she was a bit windy out there, bud, if you know what I was saying. But... Like I was telling you, Joe, it's another great example of how our development community, when pressed with a challenge, is so resilient in taking a space and completely redesigning the whole concept to make it uh, 
viable for our city. Yeah, Billy, he took courtyard retail and professional and turned it into flex space, ranging in size from 1,100 square foot to 20,000 square foot of available flex space once the project's completed. It's really pretty cool how the private sector can react to changing conditions in the economy. Well, it's amazing because it would be a project that under normal circumstances with the world that we're living in would die, but this builder got creative and said, hey, you know what, I'm gonna find a way to make this work. And not only am I gonna bring a product, but I'm gonna give something that the community can use and actually turn it into a, you know, a plus. Hey, Billy, speaking about what the community can use, next we're gonna to go to Victory Park, which is adjacent to the VA clinic and talk to uh, the developers who are uh, building a new hotel and professional medical office buildings. Now we cut to uh, Northwest 24th Avenue and Diplomat where we're talking to Danny Aguirre, the uh, developer or developer's representative for uh, Victory Park. Danny, tell us a little bit about uh, your development here at Victory Park. My name is Danny with Blue Waters Development Group and we are looking forward to bringing a quality project here at uh, the corner of Diplomat and 24th and it reaches to Littleton and Corbett Road. It's a combination of a 140 acre master plan development site in the northeast region of Cape Coral. Okay, you, you assembled uh, quite a group of, prof of professionals to put this together. Uh, why don't you share with us uh, those prof the names of the professionals who you're working with and why they bring so much talent uh, and uh, expertise to this development? Well, when we look at a project, we never want to focus on the I, but we focus on the collaborative we and what we can all accomplish for the project. In our development team, we have Gates Construction. Gates Construction is one of the largest builders in Southwest Florida. We have Ensite Engineering, award-winning engineering firm here in, in, out of Fort Myers. Uh, we have multiple architects that we're working with. Uh, we focused each architect in their region of expertise. Uh, so for our hotel, we have David Wallace. They're, they've been designing and building hotels since the 60s. For our medical office building, our MOB, we have Studio Plus. They specialize in medical, uh, in the medical industry. And as we continue to grow, we will bring in quality architects that focus and specialize in their field. That's, that's really impressive. And you already talked about uh, the hotel and the medical office building. You're immediately to the west of the VA clinic. Talk about how the VA clinic and the uh, Army Reserve uh, Center uh, is driving your development initially. Well, I'm not sure if you know the stats from the VA Medical Center, but the VA right now is generating over 350,000 vet patients per year. The city of Cape Coral has about 40,000 vets within the city. And here's a statistic for you. The city of Cape Coral is one of the largest veteran communities in the nation. If you think about it, Veterans Parkway, Veteran Museum, the Veteran Monument, we have multiple veteran monuments. So our community is really geared towards the veterans. And we have to be able to give them quality products and services which they deserve. We want to thank all the vets for their service to, the, to our country. And uh, the statistics here for the VA, you know, they're bringing in over 310,000 vets from outside of the city, scheduling their appointments two and three days apart. What do those veterans need? They need quality hotel stay to be able to, to stay here while they are being treated at the VA. And then we have the Army Reserve Base across the street. The Army Reserve Base on a monthly basis is bringing reserve troops for trainings. Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. We want to be able to provide them quality hotel stay as well. So we identified those as very good, solid drivers for this community. Yeah, that's really uh, interesting statistics. Also, you talked about the medical office building. Uh, what kind of amenities do you see going into that medical office building? Well, our focus here for the project is to be able to bring a quality product and quality jobs to the city. That's our number one priority. In anything that we do, we want to bring in the quality product and the quality jobs. So with that, we want to focus on providing services that are complementary to the VA. The VA 
provide services A, B, and C. We want to be able to provide X, Y, Z to give the vets a campus feel to be able to be serviced and treated here at, in, in their community. Aside from that, we want to be able to focus on biotech, biomed. We want to be able to, again, focus on bringing industry that is going to create quality jobs here within the city. And what other industries uh, do you think you're going to be looking for to fill out uh, your development? Well, we're definitely looking for technology. We're looking for logistics. We're looking for uh, aviation, possibly drone. We're looking at technology as being a wave of the future that we want to be able to bring here. Biotech and biomed are two industries that are growing and we want to bring them here to the city of California. Another great project for the city of Cape Coral. You know, Joe, I really like to tie in with the VA Center, but it also has a great tie in with the Army Reserve Center that is just adjacent to that. So another great project for the city of Cape Coral. A lot of synergy happening up in Northeast Cape Coral. The same developer is also doing something really exciting out in Northwest Cape Coral at the intersection of Pylon Road and Burnstall Road, a new commercial development at area, Island Pearl. Let's go there next. All right, we are now at uh, the corner of uh, Burnstore Road and State Road 78 and uh, talking to Blue Water Development Group once again. Danny, tell us about uh, your development going on, uh, going uh, up in the very near future at this corner. Well, we are currently in with permitting with the city of Cape Coral, with Lee County, and with uh, South Florida Water Management. And we are bringing to this corner at the moment uh, 30,000 square feet of medical office space and 40,000 square feet of commercial office space. Now I know on this corner you worked with uh, the, uh, the neighborhood group. Tell us about working with the neighborhood group and bringing uh, this new commercial to Northwest Cape Coral. Well, for us it was important because we, again, the focus of our group is about the community. It's not about any individual. So when we think about the Northwest community, it's a community that's completely underserviced. So for us, instead of bringing what we thought may be good to the community, we wanted to incorporate the community's thoughts. So we did a, an outreach uh, with the Northwest Homeowners Association and we wanted to hear from them. And we had a nomination party and we wanted to see what end users they would nominate. So as we were receiving these lists of nominations, we've been reaching and contacting and negotiating with each and every one of those to try to bring them to our community. Can you uh, divulge, uh, without saying specific users, what type of users you're looking for to bring to this site? Well, again, when you think about the Northwest community as a whole, it's a community that is underserviced. So when you think of restaurants, we want to be able to bring quality restaurants. When you think about uh, medical use, we want to bring quality medical end users that will be able to provide that quality product to the community. All right, you also mentioned uh, your group's interest in providing a better looking product by investing greater dollars in, uh, in the aesthetic looks of, of your products. Can you talk about, uh, about that a little bit? So a traditional finish for a development will roughly be between eight to $10 a square foot in finishes. Our products that we're bringing to market are between 30 to $40 a square foot in finishes. And what's the goal here? The goal here is to bring a quality product to a region that's going to positively impact the valuations of the community, that's going to positively impact the commercial base, tax base for the community. So when we focus on increasing our expense for development costs, we're, look, we're looking to be able to positively impact the community from a, from a valuation standpoint. Well, it's really exciting and we're very happy uh, to have your group investing in Cape Coral. We look to not only these two projects, but all the projects that I know that uh, you guys may get into as you move forward in the city of Cape Coral. We're looking forward to being able to uh, work together with the community and we're thankful to God for the opportunity. Thank you very much. Billy, that's a really upscale commercial product going in Northwest Cape Coral, hopefully setting the tone for the rest of the development happening up in that really high end section of the city. Next, we're gonna take us to South Cape, Billy. You got a new residential project coming in downtown. Tell us about it. We do have a great new residential product coming in downtown, Joe. We're going to Madison Square by American Residential Communities. 
This project is in the South Cape on Miramar Street. It is attainable 55 plus living. The great thing about this project, Joe, it's a seven story mid-rise with structured parking. There's gonna be 82 total units involved. Construction is beginning to start in March of this year in 2021 with a completed construction date of May of 2022. Billy, that's a really exciting project with a whole new uh, residential opportunity for the senior community in Cape Coral. It is, Joe. It's one of the other great things that brings to our downtown areas. Not only does it give our seniors an affordable place to live, but it also puts them within walking distance of all the great restaurants and shopping opportunities that downtown Cape Coral offers. What do we got next? All right. Well, Billy, you know, leaving the residential uh, community downtown, going to a multifamily project on Chiquita and Savona, uh, a very big project, 26 plus acres. Let's go to Chris Spiro representing that development. Hi, my name is Christopher Spiro, and I'm the Chief Creative Officer at Spiro & Associates, Marketing, Advertising, Public Relations, and Brand Architecture. And I'm here today on behalf of my client, Triton Capital, out of the Chicago area. They are so excited to bring to Cape Coral Aspire. Luxury, aspiring, apartment living, 319 units on 20 acres on South Chiquita Boulevard and it's probably going to be breaking ground in the next 60 days. According to Florida's preeminent marketing forecast firm, Reinhand P. Wolf Economic Research, Inc., Cape Coral will need over 4,500 apartments before the year 2022 to keep up with demand of new residents and pent-up demand for rental properties. Yet adding up all units completed since 2017 under construction now and in planning, it's less than half of the demand that will be needed. Therefore, Aspire was born, a highly amenitized community that brings together a luxury clubhouse with a resort style pool, internal property walking trails for safety. They got a big dog park and a little dog park, a tot lot and playground, sports and pickleball court, on-site barbecue grills, and something that the Cape has not seen yet, and that's a secondary private clubhouse that will be available to residents. Has TVs, three under roof seating areas, kitchenettes, 16 person bar, grill station, bocce ball courts, patio and fire pit. It's truly gonna be a great destination for renters to live here in Cape Coral. This $54 million project that is coming to Cape Coral is going to change the face of South Chiquita Boulevard and bring much needed rental units to this end of town. Triton Capital is bullish on Cape Coral and continues the search for other dirt deals to bring additional apartment dwellings to our great community. They are so much looking forward to being a part of our great city. Joe, what another great community project coming to our city. It's, it's really great to see all the great stuff that we have coming this year. It is really cool and a lot of money being invested in Cape Coral in 2021. Next, Billy, we go to the city manager. We talk about the city's input and ability to impact economic development in Cape Coral in 2021. All right, we're with Rob Hernandez, the new city manager of City of Cape Coral. Welcome once again to the City of Cape Coral, Mr. Hernandez. Uh, give us your insight from your seat as to what's happening in the city of Cape Coral with regard to commercial development. Well, thank you, Joe. Thank you for your time and for being here today. Uh, with regard to commercial development in this city, there's a lot happening. As you know, last year we celebrated our 50th anniversary, and now we're looking forward to our next 50-year chapter in the city's development. And right now, things are certainly on the move in the city in terms of commercial development whether we're talking about the Pine Island Road Corridor or Del Prado or it, the city's CRA area, there's a lot happening. Um, and there's going to be a lot happening certainly within the next two to five years. And I'll talk a little bit about that. So all up and down the Pine Island Road Corridor, you'll see some new shopping centers under development. Um, there's a 50,000 square foot development um, under construction as we speak on the corner of Pine Island Road and Del Prado uh, Boulevard. And so that's an example of the investment that um, developers are making in this community. Um, and, and as I said before, there's more to come. Um, just uh, two weeks ago, 
uh, Blue Waters Development Corporation, which is based here in Cape Coral, announced plans to develop Victory Park, a 140-acre project that will feature a hotel. It will also feature uh, office space and light industrial space geared towards the, the medical industry. Recently, we approached the City Council and we asked City Council to take a look at our approach to economic development in this, in this town. And we actually wanted to rename our approach. Um, rather than focusing on economic development, which is important, but that's what everybody in this community is responsible for. We wanted to focus our approach on business development because it's all about attracting new businesses and helping those businesses that are in the city grow and flourish and become successful and stay here and ultimately employ more of our residents. So our strategy is looking at um, two main components. Number one, providing assistance to, to businesses that are already here or looking to relocate to Cape Coral. And that will include many of your mom and pop businesses that you see, medical professions, veterinarians, things of that nature. And then we also outlined a strategy to create a pilot program to attract the creative uh, industries to, to the city and mostly in the South Cape area, the downtown area. We feel that that area is conducive to attract musicians, artists, architects, and things of that nature. Those types of businesses that want to be in an environment where they have access to other creative types and more of an urban setting. So we're going to try it and see what happens. And then the other component of our strategy is to provide assistance to developers. We need developers to come into the Cape and provide the product that is desperately needed to keep up with our growth. And by that product, I mean light industrial, warehouse, flex space, and also any type of non-residential space. And so when we're talking about uh, that type of product, we know that um, or certainly over the last couple of years, because of nearshoring and things of that nature, um, manufacturers are looking to be closer to their customers. Not just manufacturers, businesses that are involved in fulfilling customer orders. And there are many large ones that we go, we use on a daily basis to order, you know, just regular goods and services. And they want to be closer to their customers. And so they have a need for space. We don't have any of that space right now in the Cape. And so we're trying to uh, provide some incentives for developers to come in and provide some of that uh, light industrial warehousing and flex space. The other thing, Joe, that um, we're, we're slowly, uh, we're, we're lacking in this city, and it's a good problem to have, I, I suppose, is that we don't have a lot of office space left. Uh, just about all of our office space is accounted for in the city. And so we've had the situation where we've had businesses wanting to relocate to the Cape, and unfortunately, there isn't enough office space for them. So we need to incentivize developers to come in and start building some more office space and hopefully Class A office space for those businesses. But then we're also looking at incentivizing large developments. And I mentioned the one that was, uh, was recently announced by Blue Waters. And that is large developments that focus on becoming a, a destination for either visitors, residents, or workers. Um, Blue Waters, again, is one, one example of 140 acres, but we have met with other developers who are ready to go here in Cape Coral and are looking at building these transformational projects within, within the Cape. The other thing I want to mention, Joe, if I can, that's notable is a recognition that infrastructure drives economic development. And this city council understands that. Um, and we are moving forward with a variety of, of infrastructure projects to hopefully attract more development to the Cape. The first one that's significant is to in increase the capacity of our wastewater treatment systems in the South Cape. And um, with that, we have recently uh, embarked upon designing uh, a new system for the South Cape to help us um, deal with the additional demands on our infrastructure that new development will place on, on the city uh, within the South Cape. And that's, that's a, a major project. And hopefully um, we'll see that project completed in the year 2023 or early 2024. That project is needed in order to be able to accommodate 
hundreds of new um, uh, uh, apartment homes that are projected for the South Cape. Um, in addition, there's a recognition from City Council that we have to address the last remaining pockets of parcels along Western Pine Island Road and also the Eastern part of Pine Island Road that have seen um, development leapfrog them because of the lack of water and sewer utilities. And so that's going to be an area that is at the top of our list for investments uh, to extend that water and sewer infrastructure. And then a little further out, we'll look, we're looking at uh, extending water and sewer utilities along the Burnt Store Road corridor, which is um, poised for explosive development once the widening project that's underway right now uh, by Lee County is complete. And then there's one last segment north of Kismet, uh, Kismet Parkway. Um, and then you'll have a basically a limited access roadway from I-75 on the south to I-75 on, on the north. And so we're getting ourselves ready for that explosive growth. And of course, we continue to invest in areas along Del Prado and elsewhere in, in, in this great city as well. Well, infrastructure and incentives is all about business development, so it's really good to hear. It's also really interesting, almost every project you talked about uh, is going to be featured in this year's Catch the Vision. So right. it's, it's, uh, we'll, we will be uh, highlighting the, the projects that you talked about. Um, economic development, the economic development in the city of Cape Coral, or business development as you refer to it now. Yes. How is, that going to, how is that going to look different as we go forward compared to what it has been or the lack of what it has been in the past? Well, I think the key difference, Joe, is this. We, I think we focus our efforts on catching the big fish and bringing them to Cape Coral. And that's important. But that cannot be the main driver behind our business development efforts. We have to look at the businesses that are here. We need to help them grow and to become successful. And we believe that because of our explosive growth in population, we're knocking on 200,000 residents here, that businesses that are based here in Cape Coral have every opportunity to, to flourish. Whether you're a podiatrist, a veterinarian, a dry cleaner, or an air conditioning company, because of our rapid population growth, that should equate into um, additional growth for our businesses. So we want to take care of our own here and provide them the, eco the ecosystem that will drive their, their further development. So we want to focus, again, on our, on our businesses that are here first and foremost, but not losing sight of businesses that from uh, other areas of the country that seek to relocate here. That's a, 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 a great direction and one that's going to be very exciting and I believe is going to start showing rewards to the city of Cape Coral and building that non-residential tax base we need so bad, along with providing the job base we need. Absolutely. Absent a job base, the limitations for growth for Cape Coral are going to be trips across the bridge in the morning and coming back at night. Correct. Eventually, we're not going to be able to facilitate any more trips, and so that's going to limit our growth. So that's really where we need to go. It's pretty exciting. Correct, and we want to improve the quality of life for our residents. We know that commuting 45 minutes is uh, gets tiring after a while, and it's uh, much more productive for our residents to commute 20 minutes or so here in their own backyard, um, and that we'd like for them to spend their money. And by that, meaning when they go out to lunch, we want them to frequent our restaurants, not restaurants in some other community. When they do their dry cleaning, we want them to use our dry cleaners, not the dry cleaner that's next to their business in some community 45 miles from here. Well, you've talked about all the things that we knew were missing, but you're addressing and putting in place to get us to a 21st century community. And it's very exciting. It's also exciting to hear you talk about the fact that you have a city council that, that understands their role and are willing to step up and make these projects happen. That's really a big deal, which we haven't had in the past from time to time. Um, millions of dollars going into business development. Can you give us a ballpark as to what do you think is going to be spent in that area? Well, infrastructure isn't cheap, Joe. It's very expensive. And these projects take a long time from the drawing board to actual completion. And so I think it'll be premature at this point for me to give you an order of magnitude. I can tell you that just completing the missing sections on Pine Island Road is about $33 million for probably less than six miles worth of, of uh, sewer, system, sewer lines, pump stations, and things of that nature. The project in the CRA alone is another $35 million that we're looking at. So these projects can be very, very expensive. 
In terms of actual uh, incentives that are offered to uh, developers on a project um, specific basis, that's going to have to be look at, looked at on a case by case basis because every project is going to be different and is going to be graded differently. But when you look at those incentives, uh, you, we are aware of existing incentives that are based on capital investment in the community, gross sales of the new entity and number of jobs they provide. Sure. Is that going to be the same format? Sure, there are going to be those performance metrics that um, the developers or businesses will have to uh, agree to. This is not a, um, um, a cash giveaway. Um, uh, you know, it's all about creating value, creating wealth, and creating jobs in our community. And so there are going to be certain performance metrics that um, the recipients will have to meet in terms of investment back into their property, number of jobs created, and also, uh, and a big issue for us, is the average annual wage that um, the jobs uh, pay. You know, there's a certain minimum, and we want to make sure that these are good paying jobs with benefits for our residents. Well, that's great news, and thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. We're really looking forward to the next couple of years in the city of Cape Coral, spending literally tens of millions of dollars to promote business development and a higher quality of life. Great. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate it. Joe, it's great to see how much the city of Cape Coral has invested in economic development this year. Yeah, the city is stepping up to match the investment of the private sector in 2021. You know, speaking of 2021, that's it for 2021. Catch the vision, Billy. It's definitely been a unique uh, situation working with you there, friend. Uh, you know, we're used to this big in-person audience, but we were glad that we were still able to get the message out to you. And digitized all over the city of Cape Coral, we're still back in one piece. We are still back in one piece. That uh, it, it was a fun ride working with you there, my friend. It is always fun, Billy. And we look forward to seeing you at the next Catch Division. Stay safe, stay healthy. Good night, Good everyone. Good night, everybody. So our first project that we're going to head out to is the Fairfield by Marriott. Chamber of Commerce of Cape Coral, how may I help you? Mazurkowitz, you don't have your mask on. It's great to see how the city, see, you can't go home, but you can't stay here. Good night, everybody. Joe, it is really refreshing to see that the, how much the city of, yeah, I flubbed that, do it again. Joe, it's great to see how refreshing it is, how much, uh, God, yeah, it is amazing. Uh, let's see, our restaurants, our walkabouts. Uh, uh. All right, you got, yeah, you got big shoes there. Should I hit him with the atomizer? <laughs> We good? How now, brown cow? This is for the edit. All right, here we go. Counting down, catch the vision intro in five, four, three. Live from Cape Coral, it's Tuesday night.